So this is what you need to be able to do with a surveyor. When you come to a surveyor to start with, you often find that when we've been storing them, they're all locked up, the surveyor arms locked up. So the first thing you need to do is just loosen the screws off by a quarter of a turn or so each so that everything is mobile. And this one here adjusts the height of the arm as well. So sometimes you need to adjust that to enable you to get your model onto the surveyor table. So when we're surveying a model, the first thing we do is survey relative to the path of displacement. You remember that we said that the path of displacement uh, is at right angles to the occlusal plane. So it's this assumption that we make about partial dentures that it's always, the dent is always going to be displaced at right angles to the occlusal plane. So we put the model parallel to the bench top. So now our surveyor tool is at right angles to the occlusal plane. So this represents the path of displacement. Now, there's half a dozen tools or so that can go into the chuck here of the surveyor. To remove and replace the tools, there's a, um, a bolt up here at the top, a little knurled bolt and a collar around the chuck. We can just loosen that by a quarter of a turn. You can see that the in this case, it's the pencil lead that's just dropped out and we can replace that with the chisel or the measuring tool. You'll see on these lead holders that there's a support on one side and that's deliberate because we use the side of the pencil lead when we're uh, using the surveyor. So the pencil lead goes in with just a millimetre or so sticking out the bottom of the holder. This goes back into position and then we can tighten it in by uh, tightening up the chuck like so. And now we need to adjust the surveyor arm so that the pencil lead can come down to the gingival level. So making sure everything's loose, we can get the pencil lead down to the gingival level. And we're going to, as I say, use the side of the pencil lead here for marking the side of the tooth. So this comes into play at sort of that third step through the design process. We've already thought about where the saddles are going to be, uh, where the support is going to come from for this partial denture. Now we're thinking about retention, so we want to survey the relevant teeth to the design. And in this case, it's the abutment teeth to the saddle areas. So we've got our model set. Um, if we need to adjust the angle of the model, if it's not quite right, we just loosen this, sorry, this one by a quarter of a turn. You can see that the table will move to any angle we wish. And then we can lock it up at the correct uh, plane, like so and we can get on with our surveying. So here we're surveying this model relative to the path of displacement. So I can take my surveyor arm down to gingival level using the side of the pencil, I can scribe around the abutment tooth and you should see a nice bold line on the most bulbous part of the tooth. And if we keep the pencil lead down to the gingival level, we're making sure that we're finding the bit that sticks out most the equator of the tooth, the most bulbous part, whichever way you want to word it. And this is termed the survey line. And of course, everything below this line is undercut relative to this path of displacement. Everything above the line, of course, is not. So everything below the line we can utilize for gaining retention by putting a springy clasp in there or by putting the body of the denture into that area you can stop at that okay so that's how we find the path of displacement now we can look at the undercut relative to this path of displacement and decide where we get where we're going to position clasp tips and whether we're going to create a path of insertion now everybody gets bogged down on this path of insertion bear in mind that most dentures are made with the undercuts blocked out relative to the path of displacement uh, and that makes the whole process simple and the surveying is pretty much uh, uh, finished at this stage if we're just going to have a path of insertion that matches the path of displacement. If we want to do something different, if we want to try and engage this undercut with our denture, so to create this kind of effect where the, dent the body of the denture is going to uh, engage the undercut relative to the molar in this case, then what we need to make sure is that the blocking out on the distal of the premolar uh, is parallel to this mesial surface of the molar so that the denture can slot in and we're not going to get any of the denture stuck in the undercut. So to do that, of course, it'd be really simple on a single saddle area, but here we've got two with each, each uh, 
increase in the number of saddle areas, it gets more and more complicated. But here we've got two. What we would look at doing then is putting a, a tilt on this model. So the we call these the heels of the model. If we put this model heels down, and what we're trying to do is get a best fit of the surveyor arm down the mesial aspect of the molar tooth. And of course, we've got two saddle areas. We can only ever have one path of insertion. So we're assessing both to see whether we can get a good fit of the denture down the mesial aspect of those molars. And once we've done that, we've got the correct angle. We then resurvey the teeth, particularly the distal aspect of this premolar to show where the blocking out needs to be. And we also check the survey lines on the sides of the teeth because sometimes we see a small change because we've tilted the model. So we resurvey the sides of the teeth. You can see a small change just there on the mesial cusp, like so. And sometimes we do this in different coloured leads so it highlights where the path of insertion differs to the path of displacement. And then once we've done that, we need to communicate this angle. Remember, this is done clinically when you're designing the partial denture. We need to communicate this to the, to the technician. So there's a couple of ways of doing that. The simplest is to put the surveyor arm down the side of the model, lock it off here, and then we can take another pencil and just mark the angle of the model down the side like so. And you could do this on both sides of the model and then the technician will be able to take the model and set the same angle on their surveyor in the in the dental lab. The other way of going about it is to um, put the surveyor arm in the pallet like so. Again lock it off at a fixed height and then we can make marks around the pallet like so. And again, the technician can use those three marks to set the same angle on the, on the surveyor. So things that you need to be able to do after this session. First of all, you, you need to be competent at setting up a surveyor, positioning the model relative to the path of displacement. So that's parallel to the bench top, like so. And then you need to be able to survey the relevant teeth to the, to the design that you're working on so it's typically the abutment teeth but of course it can involve the others as well and then you should be able to look at the undercut relative to this path of displacement and discuss first of all the position of the clasp tips where they could be on the, on each abutment tooth uh, discuss the path of insertion um, with regards retention and whether it's worthwhile creating a path of insertion to improve retention or for aesthetics, if we've got a class four situation. And then of course, where we are going to position any clasp, uh, any clasp arms and clasp tips, do we need any preparation of the tooth to modify the undercut by adding composite, for example, for, to create undercut for a clasp, a clasp tip. And you should also be knowledgeable about what happens next, uh, so that the, in terms of the technician's role, and that they're going to need to, to know the path of insertion. So you need to know how to communicate that through to the lab. And you need to know the consequence of having this undercut and what's going to happen. And that we're going to block that undercut out and that will result in a gap between the denture and the abutment tooth. Okay, any questions, you can drop me an email.